Come on. Hey. This is that song you play at the cookout, that family gathering. You do the shuffle to this, the electric slide, like. Hi guys, this is Karen. Hope you guys are doing well. As you can tell from the title of this video, I know, shocking. <laughs> I'm going to be doing a first listen to EXO's um, The Sith Studio Album, Obsession. Super excited for this. It's been a while since this was released. I think uh, it's been like maybe five days, almost a week. Um, today's the 2nd of December. I finally posted my reaction to it um, yesterday. Um, this is probably going to come out after the Christmas holidays just because of like like work and like I've still got some reactions that I need to uh, upload before I even work on trying to edit this. So this might be after the holiday. So if you're watching this after the holidays, happy holidays to you guys. Hope you guys had a chance to enjoy um, some time with your family. And um, if you didn't, I hope you still had a good time regardless. Um, and just in case this is just released before the new year, which it probably will be. I um, hope you guys have a brilliant 2020. But anyways, yeah, I'm super excited to check this out. I think we're just going to jump right in. I'm not going to try and drag this out just for time's sake. As you can tell, I'm in my PJs. If you're wondering, yes, I am because it's like... 9.24 which is early but by the time I'm finished with this it's going to be time for bed okay so I'm going to take all of this off and go to sleep <laughs> but yeah anyways yeah we're going to jump right into this um as you know Obsession loved it was here for the concept was here for the stages I have seen the um EXO versus X EXO um stages which were incredible but um yeah loved the title track thought it was really interesting thought it was um really gritty um very sexy very mature very dark which i'm always here for and uh, the production was was beautiful um so yeah i, I can see from the lyrics this was uh, written by kenzie who i believe actually did um I believe she did overdose she wrote the lyrics for overdose if you don't know about kenzie you need to get to know her i've like raved about her so many times on all of my my sm and um, first listen she's incredible and just she's like the queen of songwriting in sm um but yeah so the music for obsession was done by Dwayne abernathy jr christy stallone gallo um, isaiah epperson adrian mckinnon yu young jin and Ryan S. Um, J. Hoon. But anyways, we're going to get into the part of the album that I'm really interested in. At the moment, we're going to go into the B-sides that I haven't heard. And I've heard some really, really good stuff. I've um, had some comments um, on my reaction about like the songs that you guys like, um, which was really lovely to read. So we're going to go to the second track, which is Trouble. And lyrics are written by Huang Yubin. I believe I've seen that name somewhere before. I have a feeling I have. Music by Jin Sok Tre, um, Karen Poole, Bobby Lewis. So those are new names, I haven't seen that before. And arrangement by Jin Sok Tre. I've got lyrics as well. I've got my wine. It's a Monday, but who cares? Okay. Ooh. 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 I like how eh? and excuse me, what are these kind of lyrics? All over the body deep wet in you, I'm gonna get swept away by you. Excuse you. What what's this about? Hold on, let's pause, let's pause, let's pause. Like, can we just take a minute to just appreciate how many different, like, like the changes in tempo. Well, no, the tempo is still relatively still st slowed down from the way it started. Like, it still has the dun dun, dun dun. Like, it still carries on that way. But just as it was getting into, like, I, I guess that transition into the chorus, pre-chorus chorus, um, there was this beautiful, like, uh, uh, this beautiful section. This part. I like that with the strings and I like how it builds up in intensity and then I like that that was cool and I like how they're still singing in a slower tempo and they're singing like more in their lower register which is always nice to hear
love the um, sort of like the orchestra in the back. Oh, are we getting a little reggae? Oh, like a little dove reggae. But it sustained that. Oh, yes, you better take it to the heavens. Oh, Chenny Chen Chen just giving the girls what we want. But yeah, that was trouble. Like that. I like the fact the album starts off with Obsession. Um, with a faster tempo and then you have a, the second track being a bit more slower but still gritty still ha has that high intensity with the grittier sound with the bass line with the synthesized um, instruments the orchestra there's this epicness about it but it's still understated so i really like that but i just liked how everyone was just sort of like chilling as they were singing like it just was just nice it wasn't anything too crazy it was like sitting in that comfortable range um yeah it was really really cool and i, I just like the different elements um, with the way they transitioned into the the verses and then the the bridge and the pre-chorus, like, I thought it was really seamless. That was a nice B-side. So yeah, shout out to the producers for that one. So we're gonna move on to the next track, which I'm really excited about. This is Jerkle. Um So lyrics by JQ, Kim Hyejin of Make You Mine Works. Music by Tay Jasper, who has been featured so many times on my SM um, and first listens. Uh, Kaylin Ellis and Nikki Van der. Lute Melsa, listen, I'm butchering that, and that's even shameful because I know that's a Dutch name, <laughs> and I'm a Dutch citizen. But anyways, I've been in Holland for a long time. Um, arrangement by Tay Jasper, Kaylin Ellis, Adrian McKinnon, Outlaw the Artist. Oh, okay, cool. Our, um, Aaron Fresh and Hot Boy Rich. I thought I was gonna have the. I got five on it type of beat at the beginning there. The way it's, it's starting here. That. Excuse me. Oh, that's beautiful. This is not going anywhere. I think it's meant to go. Oh, okay, we're okay. We're back. <laughs> but like late. Mm, this is more early two thousands. I think. Vocals. Then Kion, you better get it. In the background there. This is very dark. Which makes sense with the title. Ooh, beautiful. Very haunting. Mmm. Do you know what it reminds me of? Like this little section here reminds me of um, Shiny's Orgle. Oh my gosh, I feel like I was sure. Okay, Jackal. Jackal. Okay. That was very different. That was very different from anything they've done before. Like, they've definitely tried, like, darker um, songs, but it never this this crunchy, never this gritty, never this, this haunting, I should say. Um... But yeah, that was really interesting. Like there were so many things going on in this production. Like it was just, they were just like just chucking different elements at me. Um, I'll have to say I don't know if how crazy I am about that little section when it is like, like I like how the beat comes in here. But I don't know if I'm crazy about the way they sort of like shouting thing in here. But I do like the the singing and the singing parts definitely. But I think I probably need to hear this with um, earphones to really appreciate everything marrying together. I mean, the production is sick. Don't get me wrong. Like I'm absolutely here for the production. But that bit 
I guess caught me off guard with the way it started but I have to say yeah I really really enjoyed the production for that we did and I like I just I like the theme I like the build up I like the the like the sort of like the roller coaster you kind of go on when you're listening to this uh, yeah. interesting jackal definitely an interesting number okay so now we're going to move on to the next song which is groove um lyrics by jq and mola and uh, music by hyokshin and blair taylor jisoo park and arrangement by hyokshin and blair taylor <laughs> You better talk to me, Baker. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Ooh, I like where this is going. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> okay, you can you can take me to to all my dreams if you want to. It's very, very playful. Is that you guys? Oh my god! It feels whimsical. It feels playful. It feels just very light. Oh, I love this. Love this. Oh, love that. Oh, I love this song. Hey. I don't even know what kind of genre this is. I'm here for it though. Can we say there's like a slight, just a very slight, like bossa nova vibe about it? Can we say that? Give us a little flute solo or clarinet or whatever wind instrument it is. I didn't want that to end. Oh, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. I really like that track. Listen, I didn't expect it from the way it started. Then when it jumped into that chorus section, I was not ready for any of it. But I was absolutely here for every single bit of it. Like, I really, really enjoyed that. I love that. That, that whatever that genre was. Like, I felt like it had Sly Bossa Nova elements to it. But definitely more, like, synthesized and, like, electronic um compared to like the traditional like bossa nova sound but i love the way they were singing that i love how um it was just light airy like it made you feel like we were flowing on clouds it just made you feel just like you were being swept away uh, but yeah i was like i was here for it the little ad libs in the background the 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 subtlety of it all like i just i just really enjoyed that definitely i think my favorite of the b-side so far like that really just took me to places it really, really really did i was absolutely here for it okay we're gonna move on to ya 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 and oh i've heard a lot of good stuff about this one a lot of people want me to check this one out um so lyrics by kenzie our babes music by um Dwayne abernathy jr ryan j hoon who, who took part in the title track obsession david brown um charles hinshaw alan gordon jr coco tash um andrea martin and ivan Ma Ma matias or matias um and arranged by them joints so some of the producers from the obsession um title track is that swv is that swv you're sampling <laughs> Sampled um, ad libs, beautiful. 
This is the job. Hey. Hey. You better give us a little trap right now. Listen. Baekhyun, Chanyo, Kai on the track. Stop it. When they were recording this song, you can tell they really enjoy it. Oh, this is real. Are they those harmonies? Oh, that was beautiful. That's how you sample a track. That's how you do it. That's how you take the old and mix it with the new to come up with something fresh. That's how you do it. That was really cool. Like, it gave me low-key, like, NCT, like, 127 with flash vibes. Like, it gave me that same sort of, like, feel-good vibe. I'm here for this album, you know. It feels very, dare I say, black. <laughs> it really does, to be fair. I don't know if the producers that worked on... Um, You're the one um, by SWV actually were part of the um, production team that I just mentioned. I'm sure they get credited anyways because kind of you kind of have to. Um, but that was really good sampling. I love how they kind of mixed that in. I love how they kept the the um, the uh, female vocals throughout so the background and how they all kind of just just came in out the gate with it i like the melodic rapping i love how they're sort of like that that yeah 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 like using that as like the um sort of like the motif throughout it was a really cute song um kind of cheeky kind of kind of soft um that i really enjoy that oh i don't know like oh i don't know do i like that better than i do did um groove Ooh. but it's definitely up there it's definitely up there so our next track is going to be um, Baby You Are, um, lyrics by JQ and Park G and G He, and um, music by Wendy Wang, Mozella, um, Benjamin Ingrosso, Alakoy Pete, and arrangement by um, Wendy Wang. Give us a little guitar section. So different. Where's this gonna go? Oh, we love a pop rock song. Hey, this is kind of that that eighties inspired like pop rock track that I'm always here for. Beautiful. You better get a big hell in Suho. Love that. Suho is not playing in, on this track, you know. Come on, baby. Just out here. Oh. I like the use of pauses. That was cool. Beautiful. Beautiful. Like that track too. Like that. That was feel good. That was just almost like that kind of song that you want to you want to listen to when you're on a road trip like you know the the really like iconic 
road trip section of a movie you know when all the friends you just jump in the car you're on the highway as you say in america for us it's the motorway <laughs> <laughs> and you're just on there playing the music the wind is blowing your hair is being you know swept away with it it's just that feel good moment where everyone is just like joyous carefree that's kind of like like the scene I think of when I listened to this track, it just felt so nice. Love the rap section as well. Like like the uses of the use of pauses. Like Suho really like did his thing on this track. I was absolutely here for it. Um, like Chen Chen is just Chen. Like he just does what he needs to do. But I really really enjoyed what they did over here. Like I don't I have nothing more to say. But I just that was really fun. And I, I definitely loved the guitar st strumming throughout. Like I just felt like it just kind of like just kept the momentum going it was just really fun to listen to and a really well mixed production on point as usual so yeah thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed that okay so the next track is um non-stop um lyrics by um jo yoon kyung and um music by obi klein and charlie tapped my babes and andres andres oberg oh my gosh they've literally got my three faves on the same track is this r&b this is gonna be r&b it has to it has to r&b or like some 80s stuff like inspired type of track it has to be or some really cool shit like literally my faves like obi klein and charlie taft are a couple um producer songwriter team who have given us brilliant r&b box honestly automatic um by red velvet eclipse by kim lip um look by red velvet um perfect 10 and andrews oberg has written some fantastic songs for um shiny um um, I believe he was on the You Need Me track and um, Every Time, which was from the From Now On um, album as well. Um, incredible. I think he also wrote One of These Nights for Red Velvet as well. So yeah, these are I just people I absolutely adore. Absolutely adore. So I can't wait for this track. I'm actually really excited for this. I love it when I know the producers and I'm like, oh, yes, let's enjoy their work. What did I say? What did I say? What did I say? Okay, I take that back. No, we're still there. Give us a little funk. Give us a little soul. You better give me a little earth, wind, and fire. <laughs> No, this type of song needs a scarf. It needs a scarf. Where the hell is my scarf? Yeah, let's get a uh, one that sort of matches my my outfit. You better give us synthesizers. Come on. Come on. Hey, Obi Klein, Charlie Taft. Andrea Zoberg, y'all did that. Brilliant production. Jo Yoon Kyung, brilliant lyrics. Come on. Hey. Ah. Oh. If Andrea Zoberg actually played that little guitar riff, if he actually did. I don't know how I'm gonna cope. Come on. Hey. This is that song you play at the cookout, that family gathering. You do the shuffle to this, the electric slide. Like, oh, I kinda wanna listen to that again. That was so, like, fun. Super fun. Oh my god. That was. Ugh. When you have Obi Klein, Charlie Taft, and Andres Oberg on one track, I don't think they've actually all worked on the same track before. So this is just like <sighs> mind blowing for me, and that was brilliant. That incorporated all their different styles, like the funk, the soul, um, the brilliant, the, just a brilliant guitar like motif. Um, like, like I said, I got Earth, Wind, and Fire. I definitely got like that Motown kind of feel about it as well, and you know, just with the with the new new fresh sound to just mix 
and with it like it just felt like a great song to play like i said at the cookout but like for all like you know my 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 soul my soul for you know you know music fans like you know r&b funk all of that like this is the album for us like it just it's just brilliant it's like a, such a great mix of the retro with the new uh yeah really like that track that was just fab right up my alley the kind of track i want to listen to all year brilliant absolutely brilliant okay <laughs> Oh, Mr. Joe Yoon Kyung has on a track, so we're going to listen to Day After Day, lyrics by Joe Yoon Kyung, as mentioned. Um, music by Mike Daly, Mitchell Owens, okay, Dees, Jeff Lewis. Can you tell me it has that sprinkling sound at the beginning? You just know it's going to be that nice acoustic. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, oh my God. So who you better get those lines? To you, of you to end it like that as well, you know. How you just gonna just <laughs> the vocals? Like, you know, if you guys have listened to Shinies, if you love her, you know that part where they're all kind of like doing the, you know, they're doing like these like ascending harmonies like one after each other but you know like and it's so beautiful and you're just like oh my gosh it just it just keeps getting better but with this it was literally like every single section like every single one and like when i just feel like you know i've just gotten you know used to what 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 big Hyun has just done and suho comes in then i'm like okay suho you know that was that was lovely and then big Hyun comes in then it's like chen then it's like kai then it's like oh chanyo and then it's like oh like, let's let's just have like a little harmony section over here like give me a chance to like breathe to like that was just that was stunning that was such a stunning vocal performance like that was just so harmonic just just the falsettos galore um just suha it was a lot that was a lot for me it was very orgasmic, super orgasmic. Like it just t just kept taking me to levels. And it was funny because like the tempo didn't really change that much, but the vocally, when you have brilliant vocals in your in your group, like what can't you do? What or literally what can't you do? Honestly, it, that was stunning, absolutely stunning. Brilliant production as well. Brilliant vocal arrangement. Like whoever sorted out the arrangement of the vocals, shout outs to you as well. That was stunning. Okay, now we're going to go for Butterfly Effect, which is the penultimate song. Mm. 
this was written by Lisa Run, who is from Dram Factory. We've um, mentioned her before on this channel. London Noise produced this, as well as Adrian McKinnon. Um, and um, London Noise arranged it. So very excited for this one. Chanin better. Get it super. Oh, that part reminded me of, um, I know it doesn't sound like it, but it just, it just, I just got this in my head as soon as I heard that ending part was, um, um, you know Seals, um, Kiss from the Rose, like, I, it, it sounds nothing like it, but just that ending, with the way they sung that little melody, uh, reminded me of that part where it says, um, now that your rose is in bloom, like that, that, that little section, like the way it sort of like descends, that, it just reminded me of that, I don't know why that popped into my head, but yeah. Love that. Big, uh, not even Big Hyun. Jong there. Sorry. You just, you just, you're just that bitch. Like, you really just are. Oh, I like this part. The backgrounds, and obviously, same in rapid, but the background. Almost like that Mama Say Mama Say Makusa, like a really slowed out version of that. like I was in the warmth you know I feel like I was outside the Sun is shining like it's not shining too brightly but just enough to give us give us a little bit of warmth you know I feel like I'm in an open field you know fresh air the birds are chirping the wind is blowing I feel like I'm in denim shorts with flannel I feel like like in denim shorts I would say with, with some trainers, a nice top, and just I'm like just enjoying the moment, the atmosphere. I know I'm like really painting like a scene here, but like that's just how it made me feel. Like it just made me feel so good, so like light, carefree. It was just, it was just everything. I just want to be in that space. I want to be in that world you're creating by the way you're singing. Like it was just so beautiful, so stunning. I was actually here for it. Like it was just such a feel good track. Like. Um, nothing crazy, just a nice, well-produced pop track. And sometimes that's all you just need. When you have vocals like that, like, what else do you want? What else do you need? That was so beautiful. I was absolutely here for it. Like, I love the four set shows. Um, ad-libs. The rapping was brilliant. Like, Chanyo and Sehun killed that. I love the backgrounds that they were doing, the background vocals they were doing. Like, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um can't really fault it man really can't fault it you know and i know we've listened to the next track with the last track which is obsession but this is the mandarin version okay and we always like to hear the mandarin version and the the lyrics for this were written by iris chien i hope i'm pronouncing that properly Ooh, I like the I mean, I like the vibe of both But there's something really nice about the way it was sang in Mandarin over there 
<laughs> the lyrics of this song cracks me up, you know. So who did what he needed to be done with this album? And then you have Chen. Chili Chen Chen. Session album. Okay, before we start, let me just. Okay, I feel like it goes without saying. EXO, you're that bitch. Been that bitch. Are that bitch. Will forever be that bitch. Because, like, honestly, what can't this group do? Like, really, like, this is completely different from anything they've done before. And I feel like with every single era, there's always something different that they're always pursuing. Um, there's always, like, a, a, ch uh, a challenge of, like, different genres, which is not unique to EXO or anything like that. But, like, it's just, when you listen to every album, like, from every single era, like, there's just just a difference like you know like for example take the exo exo album sounds nothing like this exodus sounds nothing like this um you take the monster slash lottery repackage sounds nothing like this the war and um, power repackage sounds nothing like this you take um yeah the you know don't mess up my tempo like love shot like repack album that definitely has elements that marries well with you know with this album but it, there's still like a, a difference because even though yeah this 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 album had grittier songs it, it, there was also a lot of like fun pop um tracks that don't really fit in with with that album as well so you know they've really challenged like different styles over each like era of exo which is one of the reasons why i absolutely love them and i absolutely will continue loving them and standing them and just always be you know here for their music there's a reason why this group got me into k-pop there's a reason why i was gravi i gravitated to this group from the get-go um compared to you know the, uh, the other groups that i saw the first time i watched like k-pop like properly um and they, they've always just kind of like leaned towards like music and productions that align with my taste which has always been a blessing for me and i feel like every year i still get those tracks that just Oh, that I, I just absolutely love but I really, really enjoy this album I love how there was just a mix I feel like this one was definitely like a mix match of like stuff that they've done before but although like this song had a, like a dark theme just overall there was a lot of like light songs as well like really bright songs and I feel like I like that contrast of them really sing, like singing these like dark gritty tracks and then having these songs that just kind of make you feel like you're like airy and floaty and um, just like filled with just absolute joy so i really like that contrast if i felt like a really like nice combination of like the things that they've done before and and also like new new challenges so yeah really enjoyed that um again production team absolutely killed it as usual like I, you know with exo like even if i don't i'm not crazy about a song there's one thing i can never fault them for is production like it's always seamless always on point like there's never a part of it where i'm thinking you know this isn't like brilliant or like really interesting or like uh, just mixed it's always mixed well that's another thing like sometimes a, pro a production is good but it's not like as it's not mixed very well and i feel like with exo like you can never say the production is not mixed well like it's just done right like everything just sounds like where it needs to be and it's just it's is brilliant absolutely brilliant and i mean it goes without saying like the vocals man vocals like this was not like um, I mean, I mean, it, it was different because, like, with the War album, like, it was just like vocals galore, you know, like, you know, some songs where, where Chen was just like going off like a motherfucker, like he was just on some other level. But I feel like he still had that here, but it was, it was just different. Like, it was still powerful, but it was like more, it was contained and refined and like manipulated. <laughs> almost kind of like in a softer way compared to like what he was doing in the war album um but like everyone just stepped the fuck up like i you know 
and I wish you, you would do when you're, you're, you're downsized, you know, <laughs> to a, a six member group. But, you know, Kai came out the gate with it. You know, that goes without saying, like, you know, as much as Kai is my advice, I'm not going to stand here and say the man is the best vocalist or anything like that. He's still very much a sub vocalist, but I have to say like he sounds brilliant on this album. Like I loved all the parts that he got. There were some parts where he definitely challenged, um, a, 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 you know, like stuff like going into a, like a much more upper register to what we're used to hearing when he does do vocal parts. So, really um, enjoyed that for him. Um, I always love hearing Chanyo sing. Like for me, like as much as I love Chanyo rapping, I absolutely love hearing him sing. And I like when he um, sort of like accompanies like one of the other vocalists. And it was so nice to hear a lot of that here. Sehun has so many parts, you know, here, which obviously makes sense because there's less members. But I liked what he did over here, and I liked the parts that he got. I loved the rapping parts, and I liked the fact that he also um, sort of like sang more or accompanied um, the other vocalists um, um, as well. So really, really enjoyed that. Um, Suho gave me life on this album. Like he really, truly gave me life here like he was doing the most he was in it to win it it's always lovely to always hear uh, more of him and i like i just like how you know he sounded on some of the tracks like there's some tracks where i felt like it was like pretty much written for him and he did such a brilliant job i mean baekhyun and chen like what is there to say about those two like what it's kind of redundant to like praise them on their vocal prowess like how incredible they are as a as, as a as a duo as a force they're really truly a force to be reckoned with like when you have chen who just like a range like that control like that you know so versatile as well with his with you know with the genres he does like it just fits no matter what he does and you know i just i'm always in awe of jong day like and you can tell how much effort he puts into his craft because he just he just he's just absolutely incredible and Bikyan, Oh, I, I absolutely loved him on this album. Like, his ad-libs were brilliant. He really came through with the ad-libs. Like, I felt like he was like, yes, this, like, I have to come through from my D.O. Like, he really did that. And I felt like there were parts that Big Hill were doing that I, I definitely could see D.O. taking, as well as, like, some of the parts that um, Kai was doing. But I guess it's because they have, like, like those three kind of have, like, a dark tone. Like, even though, like, D.O. and, and Big Hill are tenors and, like, Kai is a bar baritone, they still have like a dark warm tone so yeah but i absolutely love what they did over here like you know like i'm, I'm not gonna lie I, I really do want them to re <laughs> kind of record this again with um kyungsu just to see how he fits but i guess we'll have to see in in, in, in a future concert to see which parts he takes but vocal line absolutely killed it they really did what needed to be done and they always have and enjoyed the rapping as well like even though they're not known for like incredible rapping skills like they're not a rapper in the sense that you're not going to see these people like battle rapping or anything like that they're not you know like chan yong and sehun they just do what they need to do and i feel like they do it efficiently and they do it well and then for me that's enough and um yeah i really enjoyed this it's actually really interesting that none of them took part in writing for this album but i guess it's been such a crazy year um pre in preparation wise that it wouldn't have really worked and obviously chan yong and sehun you know did the writing for their mini album earlier this year so it, you know it makes sense but yeah i'm surprised that you know at least i thought chen would have even written some something here but he then he did have two albums released this year so makes sense but yeah like as an album like i really really enjoyed this really really enjoyed this definitely an album i i absolutely loved i think i actually prefer this to don't mess up my tempo as a whole as a project i think i really do um yeah, I think this might be my third favorite. I I say this as if like I I still don't know where I put the war and Exodus. Like sometimes they're head to head. Sometimes I'm like more Exodus than I am the war. But I feel like out of the yeah, the Exodus, the war, this I think. Uh, but then I really like Exo Exo. But that's more like nostalgic. <laughs> but production wise, I feel like the, yeah, this definitely in, just took it up there. So yeah, top three favorite exo albums they really just did that on this album I, I just liked all the tracks they had the different tracks you know they they chose and the styles that they kind of went for um yeah this was brilliant in terms of favorites i don't even know you know i don't even know like i'm telling you that last half of that album was i was i was here for it i really was that last half like i'll say like from number five onwards but no like, number four like i really like groove I don't know. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to it again with my headphones and really give it a, a, 
a proper lesson with every everything included and then put the list here as i usually do um but yeah i really really enjoyed this really, really enjoyed this i think i don't know i have to say like yeah the second half of that album i was i was absolutely enjoying like it was brilliant so i have to say the second half definitely stood out to me but yeah let me know what you guys think let me know how you feel about it um yeah let me know what your favorites are i mean some of you have already mentioned your favorites in in the obsession um reaction vi video but um yeah let me know what your favorites are let me know what you thought about the album just in general but yeah that's me for the day i really need to go to bed um it's been a long day um i probably will yeah like i said i probably will release this uh, video um after christmas so like i said i hope you guys had a lovely christmas and um i'll definitely try and release this before the new year so i hope you guys have a wonderful wonderful 2020 i'm wishing you the best of luck success good health all of that good stuff i really hope that 2020 is the year for you guys and for me as well and yeah just wishing that we just um really progress and do really well in 2020 but anyways that's all i've got for you guys I'll speak to you guys later Bye-bye.